what I've got in my hands here is the American Eagle belt that went with the cape that's hanging on the wall behind us. And they came from Ed Parker, who was a karate teacher and confidant and friend of Elvis over the years. And they were given as gifts by Elvis to Ed Parker and they hung in Ed's home. Uh, he passed away in 1991 and then his wife passed away about eight months ago or nine months ago. And that when the family started getting rid of things, that's how I came across it. And actually Butch Paulson directed them to me or me to them and made the first contacts because he knew about my passion for Elvis and my desire to collect. And uh, actually there was at least some, some desire to make sure that they went into decent hands, the cape and the belt together and were taken care of. And Butch seemed to have a little bit of confidence in me and I had the confidence in him when he told me about it that they were real and authentic and, and the actual items and that's how I came about them. Obviously being a Memphian, you're an Elvis fan from birth no matter what and uh, I have. My dad was in the same, went to the same high school as Elvis and was friends with George Klein and, and that group all through their high school days if you will. Um, I owned the white suit that's worn at the end of the 68 Comeback Special, the If I Can Dream suit, which is now on display in Graceland. Um, uh, autographs, stuff like that. Uh, the, the, the pieces that you see behind me, uh, certainly the costumes and, and the cape. There were basically four capes. The first one that was made for the show was a floor length uh, arm, or arm to arm or hand to hand length cape that weighed 80 or 90 pounds or something like that. And when Elvis put it on at the first rehearsal, it was too heavy and it literally supposedly made him fall, you know, when he tried to move around in it. And so they immediately rushed what would you call a shorter version like the one that's on the wall. But uh, Gene Doucette told the story that he didn't really have enough time. They gave him 24 hours to make another cape and get it out there to him. Um, and he didn't do the embellishment, if you will, that he would have liked to have done. Uh, and then, of course, Elvis put the cape on, sang one song, threw it out into the audience, uh, and threw the belt that he had on at the time into the audience as well. And he was going to Las Vegas and doing shows right after that where the American Eagle and the theme was all being carried on. And of course they said, oh my God, you've got to get another one. And Gene got another one of the rush orders, but this time he had a few weeks to put together this cape, and so he did if you will, all of the embellishment and the improvements that he would have wanted to do on the first one. Uh, and this cape is the one he wore most of the time in that 1973 concert tour and period of time. And it is certainly the, what I think is the most important piece that's you know, out there. It's certainly the cape that he wore more than any other of the capes.